have an emergency. Today on Rescue 911. Terror on the ice. A snowmobiler falls through thin ice while his best friend stands by helpless. I said, oh my God, what happened? Rescuers risk their lives in sub-zero temperatures. And he's very critical that he doesn't have much time left. Then, Rescue 911. Friendships are special gifts to be cherished. And when a crisis threatens to take them away, we'll do whatever it takes to prevent the unthinkable. I'm William Shatner. Tonight, true stories of strength, skill, and spirit on Rescue 911. We begin on December 19, 1992, as Mike Gillum and his best friend, Marlon Bessler, set out to go snowmobiling on a frozen lake near their home in Minnetrista, Minnesota. <laughs> Marlon and I picked up his uh, new snowmobile, and of course we were very anxious to try it out. On our way, we had noticed that there was some open patches of water. decided that uh, we better get home uh, because this ice does not look safe. We had to keep the speed up for at least past 60 miles an hour because if the ice is not safe or if it's not thick, you want to be going a little bit faster so you can just skip across it. I had sped across the bay and had stopped and looked back and I didn't see him. When we continue. I looked out on the ice and I saw nothing. I know from my training that the person's going to be very hypothermic and probably isn't going to be able to hang on or stay floating very long. When Mike Gillum lost track of Marlon Bessler while they were snowmobiling together on a frozen lake, he had no idea what kind of trouble his best friend had gotten into. And so at that point, I knew that I had to get back to an area where I last saw him. and I saw a black dot in the horizon. When I first saw that black dot in the water, I said, oh my God, what happened? And I couldn't believe that it, he had fallen through the ice. I was scared to death and I really didn't know what to do. Just plain fear kept me paddling and kicking as fast as I could in order to get to an area where I could get my body up onto the ice. And at that point, I had made a decision that I can't go over 
and help Marlin because all I would do is fall through the ice. The only thing that I can think of is running to shore and try to get some help. Someone who saw the accident had already called 911. The Hennepin County Sheriff's Water Patrol rescue team responded. I could see just a little speck out in the middle of the lake, and as long as I saw that speck, I knew that he was okay. But at any minute, I felt like that speck was going to disappear and he was going to be gone. It's an absolutely frightening thought. Sergeant Bill Chandler was the first member of the rescue team to arrive. By that time, Marlin had been in the freezing water for more than 15 minutes. I looked out on the ice and I saw nothing. I know from my training and experience that the person's going to be very hypothermic and probably isn't going to be able to hang on or stay floating very long. Deputy Marianne Olson arrived already wearing a cold water survival suit. It was a real strain trying to run with the Gumby suit on and carrying a rope bag. And as we were running, I looked out and I saw this little black speck. And someone pointed out and said, that's, that's him. And I just, it was incredible. I thought, that he's really out there. Members of the local volunteer fire department drove over to help the rescue team when they heard the report on their radios. We knew that going out on the ice was dangerous, but he had been in the water probably over half an hour already. So I knew that he's very critical, that he doesn't have much time left, and we've got to get him, get him out and into a warm environment. Everybody stopped their snowmobiles, and I told them to stay back, because I knew between us and that hole was the worst ice. Hang on, we're coming! I also knew how critical it was, and I knew we had to get to him quick. Okay, I got it. Hang on, we're coming! When I went through the ice, I had an instant wave of pain coming from my waist up to my head. I was scared. I remember thinking, my God, if I don't get to this person quick, I'm going to see him go down. And I never saw any movement. And I never heard anything from him. I felt the ice start to cave in beneath me, and then I remembered feeling a real sense of urgency. Bring the basket! Thinking that I needed to do what I was trained to do if I was going to help this man, and I had to do it in a hurry. If we could not hang on to him, he was down. I resolved that I wasn't going to let go of him, but I still had a fear that if he slipped out of our grip, he was just going to disappear from sight in the water. He's having a problem. Hold on. So make sure you keep on the ice. No, we're right behind you. All right. Get him on. Come on. Get him on. All right. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Let me get up on the ice. Okay. And they started moving, and I thought, thank God, this guy's got a chance now. If they keep hustling and get him into shore, he might make it. After spending nearly 45 minutes in the icy waters, Marlon Bessler was taken to the local hospital, where he was treated for hypothermia and released the next day. That is as close to death as I've ever been. And... I started thinking, should I prolong this as long as I can by holding my breath uh, at the bottom of the lake, or do I just take one big gulp and kill myself? 
So when I heard the help coming, it was it was just the most unbelievable sound, and I felt just elated. I mean, it was like this is going to be the happiest day of my life. Ever since this situation happened, we have been extremely cautious, and it's very important to us that uh, we go out and enjoy what we like to do, but also be safe doing it. When you get saved, like I did, you look around, you say, wow, you know, there are hundreds and thousands of people in this world that dedicate their life to saving other people. I felt like I did my job and I did the right thing, and this man lived, and I actually saved somebody's life. I just, it was a feeling of elation. It just felt as good as having a baby. <laughs> I'm most grateful for being alive, just breathing air today.